In this case, or the change in entropy, this process takes place at constant temperature. So delta S is the heat added to the system to get the ice cube to melt, I must add some heat to the system Q. So the heat added Q at divided by the temperature T, this is a change in entropy. The heat added is simply the mass of the ice times the latent heat of fusion. That's the heat needed to melt the ice cube. Temperature is zero Celsius, which is 273 Kelvin. So this is 0.02 kilograms. The latent heat of fusion for ice is 3 point, about 3.35 times 10 to the 5 joules per kilogram. So here, that's why you have here kilograms. So the answer will be in joules divided by 273. This is joules per kilogram divided by 273 Kelvin. So this is uh, 6.7 times 10 to the 3. So 6,700 divided by 273 joules per Kelvin. All right. So this is about 6,700. That's about, let's say, 7,000. This is about 300 here. So you get about 25. The answer is about 25 joules per Kelvin. So this is a change in entropy. It's an increase in entropy, as you see. Delta S is positive. The, the entropy of the ice in going to water increases, which makes sense because, in a way, entropy is a measure of, this, of the disorder. The more disordered the system is, the higher the entropy. Water is more disordered than ice. In ice, the water molecules sit. Ice is, is a solid. So the atoms, the, the molecules of water in ice, they sit at equilibrium positions. And they just move around the equilibrium position. When the ice melts, it becomes water. And the water molecules move far from wherever they start from. The, a water molecule can move throughout the water. So in a way, it has more freedom of motion now. And so there's less order. And thus, there's an increase in entropy.